Heartland Football Friday, sponsored by EBOMD. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to our first Heartland Football Friday in the month of October. It just feels like football out there, and we begin with a good rivalry. Chaffee hosting Scott City, and Chaffee recognizing the 1983 state championship today. Uh, that team out there today, of course, on the 40th anniversary of this amazing accomplishment. Great to see the, the players and family members back to celebrate that 83 title. Meanwhile, here they go with Shelton Simmons on the pitch, makes a cut, cuts in, and then he cuts back out. He'll take a pretty good hit at the end of it, but he also got a pretty good run. But back comes Scott City and Tyson Underwood. All he does is score touchdowns. He is some kind of competitor along with quarterback Mark Panagas. He's in there with that one. Uh, meanwhile, looking for something else. Uh, this is Logan Horton. Chaffee had some moments. Look like he might go, but the speed would get him right down there at the end. And also Scott City was playing some defense. Check out the pick. And how about that one? Lawson Graff looks like he might be taking it to the house, but those honors, honors would belong to quarterback Mark Panagas. You've seen this movie before. And Panagas cuts back in and he's gone. 56 to 14, the final score, Scott City over Chaffee. All right, next up, the Cape Central Tigers making the trip to Sykeston to tangle with the Bulldogs. Let's head out for those highlights. Love the band, love the atmosphere, and love the students. That's how you get them going out there. Meanwhile, how about Keyshawn Boyd? Number eight is a whole lot to deal with, and he's tough to bring down. You get the idea. They'll finally kind of grab him and throw him down at the very end, right there. Meanwhile, you can see the student section looking for some more, and Cape Central delivers some more. Boy, this time, he's got a touchdown, and Cape Central's got a win. The flags are flying, 48 to eight, the final score. Out to the pit, the Jackson Indians looking for six straight against Confluence Prep. Adrian Fox, their quarterback, airs it out. Blaine Harris between two defenders for Confluence Prep. All they can do is look at one another and say, how'd he do that? Meanwhile, how'd Jackson do this? They start moving it down again. The pass completion to Harris, and they get it down, and Jalen Hampton knows how to deliver the knockout punch. Does he ever? He's in. They weren't finished, not by a bunch of points. Kai Crow on the receiving end right here, and it's a win for the Jackson Indians. Six straight, 70 to nothing over Confluence Prep. All right, we head to Southern Illinois for our Heartland Football Friday game of the night. The unbeaten 6-0 Murfreesboro Red Devils playing at 5-1 Harrisburg. The Bulldogs coming the off. game of the night, sponsored by Missouri Men's Health. I'll finish it. The Bulldogs playing, uh, coming off a big road win of course over previous unbeaten Carterville and they started fast again tonight just a couple of plays in the defense comes up big Jack Ford says that football is mine number four grabs it and he takes it in there for good yardage they're right down in good position and the Bulldogs also were pounding that football some more Travis Fan takes it inside the five yard line they had four cracks at it from inside the five, but that Murfreesboro D stands tall. They would not let him take it inside the end zone. And then quarterback Gibson Fager, he knows how to get it done, drops back, uses his feet a little bit, scrambles for the Red Devils, and they're making big plays. That one way down the field, they would eventually punch it in themselves and eventually get the win again. Murfreesboro still undefeated, 40 to nothing in this one. Meanwhile, a pair of Franklin County rivals, Benton and West Frankfurt, playing tonight. This game being played about three weeks since the crash that killed three teens in the area. They were selling t-shirts at West Frankfurt tonight to support the families of the victims. They've raised a lot of money with those t-shirts to help out those families. Meanwhile, we'll head now out to the plays and the highlights, and it's quite frankly a little tough to read them after what's happened uh, with too much excitement, isn't it? Kind of puts things in perspective. Some good defense that time though. Redbirds trying to get it going. 
they get a, a so maybe a good turnover against Benton, but it goes in Benton's favor as well. Both teams kind of gave the ball up a little bit. Luke Berry would eventually recover that football. Meanwhile, the, the Rangers would start to move it. The young man likes it, and here they go again. Riley Spencer and company, no stopping them. Made it 35-14. They would keep pushing the accelerator down, and the final score in this one, 42-20. It's a win for Benton over West Franklin. Meanwhile, the St. Vincent Indians are having another strong season. Tonight, they hosted St. Pius in this game. Meanwhile, uh, St. Vincent team trying to get it going. Eli Abernathy with the sack. And then they, they got things going with, with Kristen Schaff, the quarterback. That's a good guy to always call. He fires this one out to Jacob Shrimp for good yardage to number 36. And then Schaff again. Watch this one just kind of underhands it, flips it for the touchdown to Clayton Grimaud. Now, I've got to tell you, no final in yet on this game. So still waiting on the final score. And we'll try to update that one a little bit later. And when we return, we'll look in on a historical night at Haytai High School. And it's the first Hall of Fame class for Haytai. You don't want to miss it. We've got some reaction as well coming up.